I aspire to have this level of confidence. Break up with someone, but expect them to pay for two weeks worth of a whole trip from Connecticut to Singapore? If you're making retail money, you can't afford a housekeeper. I'm just going to call it. You know what? At the end of the day, the she still had a Taylor Swift ticket. That's true. <laughs> maybe like everything else, maybe not. But a Taylor Swift ticket she had. Hey guys, welcome to the Honey Hearts Podcast. I'm V. And I'm Sandra. And today we're bringing you some heartwarming, but sometimes heartbreaking stories. Woo. In a relationship, it can be a nice gesture to offer to do things or maybe buy services, buy gifts for your partner, your wife, husband, fiance, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it may be. But sometimes the gifts and the request for those gifts, they make us pause a little bit. So today, let's dive into that. This story comes from the subreddit, Am I the A-Hole? Am I the A-Hole because I won't pay to continue housekeeping services for my wife? My wife is someone who has always had a housekeeper from a young age. Oh, girl. When we first discussed moving in together before marriage, the division of chores was a hot topic. I was on team, we can do it ourselves, and she wanted to keep using the housekeeping service she had. Ultimately, I agreed to the housekeeping service after both our parents told me it would be easier to agree to make her happy. My only thing was that it was a service she was responsible for paying for. Okay, that sounds okay. fair so far. She started out having them come every other week, then once a week, to every other day to keep the house as clean as she liked it, and do things like her laundry and emptying the trash in her hobby room. Huh? How much trash is happening here? In the hobby room? Assuming uh, the couple here, OP and uh, his wife, are probably, you know, have a pretty big house. Are, are they rich, rich? Like... For a housekeeper to come every other day? And to do their laundry? I mean, I don't, I don't want to jump the gun, but I would say so, probably. Hmm. Mid-January, my wife was let go when her company downsized. She's been having a hard time finding a job in her field. For now, she's working part-time in retail. We weren't making amazing money before she was let go, but we live comfortably due in part to living below our means for the most part. Is below our means and housekeeping every other day in, this, like, in the same room I with us? I think we have different definitions of below our means. Since her current job doesn't pay much, I said that I would cover all of our joint expenses, like mortgage, property tax, utilities, and her phone so she doesn't have to deplete her savings and her savings won't suffer as much either. She paid for the cleaning service in February, but then yesterday asked me if I was going to set up a direct pay with the cleaning company or transfer her the money to keep paying them. It's $190 a week. A week? That's another bill. Wait, that's more than another bill. Is this still b considered below their means? I'm like maybe we have is, different definitions. What is making not much? What does that mean? <laughs> I, I think we're in a different uh, uh different tier of wealth here. Uh, are we in the same tax bracket? <laughs> I told her neither. The housekeeping service was something she wanted and was responsible for. If she can't afford anymore without dropping her savings below a point that she's comfortable with, then we don't need it. And I'm not going to pay for something two able-bodied adults are perfectly capable of doing ourselves. I mean, I think it's fair if they can't afford it. Yeah. Their uh, job salary situation has changed. And it's not like the wife was going to handle it herself. OP was willing to split the work. Like, split the chores. Because he's he was saying, uh, I'm team, we can do it ourselves. So, the we. Um, we argued. She says, I know how much she hates cleaning. And that it stresses her out. And since the housekeeper cleaned up areas like the kitchen and living room and made the bed sometimes, I was benefiting from it. So it counts as a joint expense. Okay, I get the, you know, housekeepers cleaning kitchen and living room, but making the bed? I'm just imagining a very bougie lifestyle. Maybe it just maybe... sounds very hotel now. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe this is a more common practice elsewhere in the u.s that i'm not aware of or maybe some people just enjoy this extra luxury maybe I'm to be just honest not <laughs> i don't know we don't know what it's like <laughs> i was benefiting from it so it counts as a joint expense i told her it doesn't because i'm perfectly happy to clean up after myself and i've cleaned rooms before when they needed it between visits 
fast forward to today and she thinks I'm still being a jerk by not paying for it. Am I being an a-hole here? No. OP is willing to split the cleaning, so it's yeah. basically just like being an adult. I understand you don't like cleaning, but to be completely honest, who, who loves cleaning that much? Most people it's, don't. It's a chore. That's what it is. But it's like your responsibility as a homeowner, as an adult, to keep your space cleaned and maintained. I don't know. I feel like this is basic, like, necessary tasks in life. Are OP and his wife... Uh, No offense, I'm just curious here. Are you guys slobs? Because why do you have a housekeeper that was going every other week, to every week, to every other day? Yeah. What are you cleaning? You know what I think they can do? They can compromise. They could get a housekeeper that might not cost 190 a week and just have them do a few tasks. Cleaning kitchens and bathrooms, those are more... You know, like, those are a lot harder to do than just, like, making the bed and doing laundry. So maybe you can just, like, yeah. scale back the cost, if anything, as a compromise. And just, like, do some of the work yourself. And then just, like, have the harder th harder things done by a housekeeper. Yeah. Or I guess one thing is if, you know, if she hates cleaning specifically, maybe there are other chores that you guys can kind of trade off on or something yeah. like that. I want to know what their income is looking like. I, just, I am curious. Like, this lifestyle, I cannot comprehend. Because they, they did say that living below their means, they were still having this housekeeper come every other day. Right. But then what's confusing to me is now that the wife seems to have worked retail, which typically doesn't make, you know, what I would assume would make sense with having a full-time housekeeper, yeah. is it an issue where, you know, she hasn't really fully accepted that she needs to downsize expenses? Do they have kids? Um, that's not listed. No kids are mentioned. If they are a grown couple who own the home, they without a kid, I don't think doing your own chores is impossible. I think you can enlist some help, yeah, but I don't think you need them to come every other day. Alright, so there is an uh, further context or update. I've been doing the housework even with the housekeeper. I do my own laundry. Oh. I make her bed most days. I clean oh. up after our pets, clean the kitchen after we cook, and that includes the oven, stove, and microwave. I take out the trash and recycling, clean the AC filters. I dust between visits. I'll sweep and clean the bathrooms between visits. Okay, what Wait. are you get what is the housekeeper cleaning then? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, there's more. Uh I clean up the shower and sinks after each use. I pick up after myself. Is Opie's wife, you know, have a condition where she like needs to have each surface like sterilized or something? Yeah. Cause this seems I extreme. Feel like even the OP's share of chores and cleaning sounds kind of excessive or maybe i'm just a slob i don't know <laughs> like op says he cleans the bathroom every day between visits and he sweeps too i mean i, I don't know that what you're sounds sweeping about off the floor, every but... day or every other day yeah i mean between visits is that like you pee and then you sweep the floor and you clean and you spray and then you poop and you do it all over again <laughs> okay oh yeah um Clean up the shower and sinks after each use. I pick up after myself. Most of what the housekeeper does is already done by the time she shows up. What? Does she just like the idea of having okay, a housekeeper? Okay, make, make it make sense because now I don't get it. If my wife is home, then it's her mess that gets cleaned up. Or her clothes, plates, items that she leaves around. The housekeeper also cleans her hobby room. Does her laundry and whatever else my wife asks. She's just used to having a daily cleaner due to her childhood. Okay. You know what? This sounds like mommy. Like, mommy looking after a child. It seems like she likes... I don't know whether it's like an ego thing or maybe it's a comfort thing, mental comfort thing. She just likes the idea of having someone there picking up after her. I'll be honest, I, I hate to comment on other people's like relationship in private unless they're directly asking for advice on it. But how are you living as a partnership or couple if it's kind of like she cleans her stuff i clean my stuff only and it's to the level of oh laundry completely separate dishes my dishes are separate from her dishes and plates the division of like chores it just 
and lifestyle. It just sounds so separated. Yeah. Yeah. Like not cohesive in a shared household. And what does the wife mean by like it reminds her of her childhood? Like as in she had a housekeeper in her childhood or like as in oh it reminds her of when mom used to pick up after me so op did state that my wife is someone who's always had a housekeeper from a young age wow so i guess is it just the idea of she wants to even though now i imagine she's working retail as an example but then she comes home and she wants to continue having that i'll have to say somewhat inflated lifestyle experience yeah. is that maybe i mean on? If you're making retail money, you can't afford a housekeeper. I'm just going to call it. You can't afford it. And you can't force someone else to pay for it. Especially your husband who's trying to be responsible and tell you, hey, babe, this really doesn't financially make sense. And if hubby is willing to do half the cleaning, you know, I think you guys can work it out. Yeah. I think wifey here can learn to pick up a broom. I'm sorry. Are you? Do you make your bed? (sighs) I want to be that person, but if I remember, I'll kind of drape the blanket over like a little bit nice and square, but most of the time I don't. I'm a slob. I'm sorry, guys. See? Because I'm kind of like, I'm going to lay into it. I wake up from it, and then at night, I'm just going to go on Okay, my thing is, I'm getting out just to go back in later. Yeah. Unless I have guests over who might see the upstairs, (laughs) then I will make the bed oh, I, I must look presentable yeah like let me not let the blanket look like a clump well short story time when i used to work in retail um i i used to work well retail pharmacy so i used to be a pharmacy technician and the pharmacist i worked with she was like oh you would be such a great roommate i bet you're the type of person who would make your bed every day <laughs> and i was like uh-huh sure I am not the type of person to make my bed every day. Here's like, I just feel like it's a, it's like an extra, I know it's easy to do, right? It's just, I see no value because what you're, I, like Sam just said, I'm going right back to it in like, I don't yeah. know, 12 hours. So, But if you are, you are a person that makes your own bed every day, kudos to you because I yeah. wish I was just like you. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the comments. $760 per month is a lot when you are down from two incomes to 1.5, with the half probably paying a lot less. She's mentally villainized what is a basic life requirement for the majority of the, of the population. Maybe yeah. if she did it regularly, she would realize it's not anything to flip out over. It's just an undesirable necessity. Welcome to responsible adulting, not the a Yeah, I think she's just not used to it. That's such a privilege to be able to say that. I'm not used I'm not to cleaning. used to doing my own laundry and making my own bed. Even her own plates, though. Ah, oh. she can load it up. Uh, she can load it up in the dishwasher. All right. Uh, next comment. Not the a-hole. Having a housekeeper is a luxury, a real luxury, not a simple one like a cup of coffee. Furthermore, you agreed under the condition that she'd have to be the one to pay. If she can't pay for luxury she can't afford, that's on her. Most people don't actively like cleaning. A lot of people get stressed out by certain chores. That doesn't mean you're entitled to a housekeeper. She can either humble herself or do it herself like most people. Or she can find another way to pay for a luxury she wants. End of discussion. Yeah, I mean, literally it boils down to you cut back on the cost of a housekeeper or you increase your income to afford a housekeeper. That's it. Yep. Uh, Last comment. Not the a-hole. Please extend a warm welcome to reality to your wife. It seems it might be her first time joining us here. I love the sarcasm. Yeah. Nobody wants to clean. It's a necessity of being an adult in your own living space. She can stomp her feet and pout all she wants as long as she's doing it with a broom in hand. Just because she's been spoiled as a child doesn't mean you need to continue it in adulthood. It's time for her to grow up. Yeah. Usually I kind of don't like that saying. I don't really like that saying like, hey, you just need to grow up. But like in this case... I think this is a case of like you're already grown up and you just kind of have to embrace it. I'm in agreement. Couples, you know, they accept each other's differences and all that. But in this case, this particular difference over a basic life necessity is not worth stressing out the relationship over, not worth the financial burden that it's probably placing onto your lifestyle and your 
relationship. Like, it's not, yeah. it's just not worth it. Yeah. Um. So, Redditors have rated this not they home, and I have to agree. Yes. All right, guys. Just a quick, brief reminder, in case you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. We really rely on your support. Thank you. Just like in the last story, paying for something for your spouse or what your spouse wants can make your spouse happy or it could bring about a few problems. Let's check out the issues that we're facing in the next story. This next story is from subreddit r slash oh no consequences. Am I the a-hole for giving my ex-girlfriend her ticket for Taylor Swift but canceling everything else? I'm working overseas right now and I managed to get tickets for Taylor Swift in Singapore. Wow, that is a big flex. It is hard to get her tickets. The concert is this coming Saturday. My plan was to fly my girlfriend over for a little vacation. It's a long ways from Connecticut, so she was going to be staying for 10 days. I was clear and I told her that we would have two weekends together as well as evenings, but that I still had to work during the daytime. Makes sense. Makes sense. Last week, she called me and said she was not okay with being long distance and that after the concert, we were over. Excuse me? Oh, I love how she squeezed that in. I want to be over now, but after Taylor Swift. I asked for a clarification. She said she would come for the 10 days and we could, quote, have fun, but that we were done. I can have fun without paying for it. I transferred her the one ticket and canceled everything else. She called me to scream at me for canceling the flights and hotel. I told her that I wasn't going to discuss it and hung up. I blocked her on everything. I'm hearing from people back home that she has lost her mind. She had been bragging about getting to see Taylor Swift and the vacation. Now she is telling everyone that I canceled the plans just out of the blue. I guess that is sort of true. I did not discuss it with her before I made my decision and did what I did. I unblocked her long enough to offer to buy the ticket back if she wasn't going to use it. That conversation was unpleasant and involved a lot of profanity. <laughs> The upshot was she would rather let it go to waste than let me have it. Ah, uh, petty. I aspire to have this level of confidence. Break up with someone but expect them to pay for two weeks worth of a whole trip from Connecticut to Singapore? The audacity. And Taylor Swift tickets? Wow. Her friends have been defending her and calling me an a-ho. My position is that I would feel like a John flying her over for fun. I'll be honest, if she had any brains at all, why wouldn't you have said the breakup after the two-week trip? What made you think that you could tell him you're going to break up with him, but then spend his money? So girlfriend's reasoning for breaking up with OP was that OP was working overseas and they're long distance. Yeah, but the breakup can wait until after Taylor Swift happens, where she flies overseas. And she's okay with <laughs> having fun with OP for two weeks. Last and then hurrah? just calling it quits. Yeah, That's it sounds like a last, last hurrah. Wouldn't that be awkward? Like, you know your your relationship now has an expiration date after Taylor Swift. So then what? You're going to hang out with him and be like, or do you call them your girlfriend, boyfriend still? Or wait until after Taylor Swift yeah. and then drop the bomb if you really wanted to go that route. Like, I don't support it, but. Yeah, I don't support it, but like. Kind of use your head a little bit here, you yeah. know? Maybe she's just that delulu. I mean, that's a thing, too. You could be that delusional that you think, you know, the stranger, essentially, because after you broke up with them, I doubt yeah. they're remaining friends, right? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll still, yeah, you just dumped me. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll pay for everything. Like, I'll weeks. pay for your two-week vacation. I don't think so. But Opie had the courtesy to let her keep the ticket. She just needed to pay for her own, her own plane and hotel. He was too kind. Too yeah. kind of that part. Commenters say, not the Aho. Really bizarre behavior and seemed like she was trying to use you. I mean, paying for flights across continents ain't cheap, so there's that angle. I just don't see why she would fumble the, that opportunity by telling you before the trip and not on the trip towards the end. I'm Her mistake saying. saved you in the end. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. Like, I don't support it, but like, it was kind of dumb on her part. Definitely dumb. Any replies from OP? Let's see. Uh, just a quick one. Not the a-ho, but why did you give her the ticket when you'd pay for it? Should have kept it and taken someone else. She was just using you as a sugar guardian. 
Hopefully you find someone that you deserve soon. And OP just replies, I really enjoy Sugar Guardian. <laughs> Sugar Guardian makes me think of like Pretty Guardian, Sailor Moon. Who OP waves for magic. Fun. Yeah. I, you know, I support it. I wish he had kept the ticket because then he could invite someone else. Even a yeah. friend if you're not, you know, looking for anything romantic. But yeah. a friend, anyone else, someone preferably that didn't just dump you or told you they were going to dump you in two weeks. Yeah. Okay, here's a quick uh, comment and reply from OP. F around and find out. She tried to schedule your breakup for after the concert. You just rescheduled it for before. What did she think you would do? Pay for an ex-girlfriend's stuff? LMAO. Right? This was entirely self-inflicted as she could have just broken up after she got back from the concert. Still completely a maneuver, but here she's like monologuing villain, telling the heroes of her insidious plot and how to stop it before it's too late to stop it fooled again and op replies she wanted to trade sex for the trip i don't do that <gasps> this no girlfriend, girl you are not being right here it's uh, um i guess she really didn't think that much about the relationship if she's scheduling the breakup expecting to pay and then offering sex for Taylor Swift, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm glad Opie has enough dignity to recognize that's not what he does. Girlfriend, you are not that that's not how you do things. Just no. I'm truly baffled by the logic, because the logic was not logicking here. Um <laughs> <laughs> It's kinda silly. Oh sorry. <laughs> Opie also comments I think she thought ten days of sex was a good trade. What? Man's gotta work. I'm sorry. How realistic is this? He's yeah. not even gonna get like the f like that experience. This is. I think she's looking for like a sugar baby, Situation, sugar yeah. guardian relationship. Sugar guardian. <laughs> like maybe she's just so I guess like in the mode of getting ready for the concert that every other logical thought just went out the window. You know what? At the end of the day, the she still had a Taylor Swift ticket. That's true. Maybe like everything else, maybe not. But a Taylor Swift ticket she had. I don't know how she's going to get there. But you know what? A win's a win, I guess, for her and that Taylor Swift ticket. And then I just spotted one more. Ooh. Not the a I guess it was better that she was upfront as opposed to going, letting you spend all that money and think the relationship was fine only to dump you. She should have said she no longer wanted the relationship. So she doesn't feel right about keeping the ticket leading you on etc and had a conversation maybe you would have been cool with a farewell visit maybe not and op says i was going to propose <gasps> no oh my god have you seen those tiktok videos where in uh what is it love story what do you mean love story like taylor swift is singing love story uh-huh yeah. and and there's a line where it's like um oh he pulls out a ring yeah, yeah, yeah pulls out a ring and and so and so i've been seeing so many tiktok videos of guys proposing to their girlfriends with that song at in taylor swift's concert oh uh. so many i've been binge watching them if op was planning to do that in singapore oh that uh. is so heartbreaking that would have been so awkward. Yeah, I, I have to show you videos later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to see it. Now I'm curious. But I'm just... Oh, that's devastating. Yeah. Well, good thing for OP. Dodge, dodge the bullet there. Yeah, save that for um someone more special. For because, Miss Or, like, yeah, like someone who appreciates you. Clearly, this was not a match made in Singapore or Connecticut. I'm pretty sure Taylor would be on board with... um. You canceling that flight and hotel. I'm just imagining OP going to the Taylor Swift concert alone now. And she has a lot of good, like, breakup songs. Yeah. Like, and just, like, belting out, like, yeah, all these breakup songs. You now. know what, OP? You should go to the concert if you weren't going to already and just, like, enjoy you, yourself. You might meet someone there. There's yeah a lot of great people there. And even if you don't meet anyone, it'll still be a fun experience. All right. So we're going to go ahead and check out some Taylor Swift concert proposal videos. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media at Honey Hearts Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, and of course on Spotify and YouTube. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.
Thank you.